Hi guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs and welcome to another First Division review show. It'll be the last one for a few weeks actually, Keen. We've plenty of stuff though on the way as well, like in fairness, so uh, don't worry there, Keen will still be here in the next week and that, guys. <laughs> if that's all right with Keen, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, but... <laughs> we'll start off with Cavan Teeley and Wexford and finish Cavan Teeley nil Wexford FC 2 and in fairness though not to give ourselves big heads or anything we kind of called this didn't we in fairness we just sensed that Wexford were going to get at least a point and uh, they got the win here obviously Robinson with an early goal Doherty in the second half Fox got sent off late on but um, yeah look it's our first points of the season and it's a win and it's great to get that result from Cavan Teeley's point of view Um the way we talk about them, they kind of proved our point a little bit again here, didn't they? Just really up and really down at times. But uh nice header for Kyle Robinson, by the way. And as Pats fans, uh, delighted to see him getting the score sheet and hopefully he can kick on if possible. Yeah, look, massive win for them. Uh, badly needed. They, they've got that win now. They got that first win off that back. Going into the break now. and They couldn't have got a better time, you know? Mm. So, really good. Fully deserved as well. Like, they were... The better team in the whole in the game, like you know, they were the better team and fully deserving of that three points. Uh, Robinson was excellent up front, uh, great to get a great to get a goal for himself, and you know, I think that's a second now. So you know, I'd be looking to put more on the board now if he can maybe hit eight or nine by the end of the season. He'd be doing well, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, go on ahead. Uh, I thought Cameron Healy were poor again. You know, they go out last week and win a game, and then you know. The, Poison last week, I have to say. Now, watching the game, I was disappointed. Uh, the game actually surprised me. There was a very good bit of quality in there from Wexford and how they played. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but they really surprised me in mm. terms of like it's not the Wexford that you're what you said. And I knew we were going to have a better, uh, better showing from Wexford out with the lads coming in and you know, all change at the club. But you know, so far, so good going into the break with your first three points. Now about that time to get it and look, bring on next week for them then again. Yeah, funnily enough, Ian Ryan said they could have been more clinical, in fact, in the game, which is great if you get me because he went 2 0 and he fe- feels like there was even more room for improvement, let's say. Oh, there was 100%. And anyone that was going to win it, I think I knew from early on it was going to be Wexford. They were just, they were so comfortable in the game. And, you know, we're not used to seeing that in the league in general. You're not used to seeing teams being comfortable. So, uh, Wexford would be delighted with that. Yeah, it's great for Wexford to get off the mark in fairness and get three points on the board. At Long Town 2, UCD 3, and this is a typical almost UCD type win. I mean, two down, obviously, uh, McKenna and Barnes in the first half, but uh, Kerrigan got one back, I think, in the first half as well, fairly quick, didn't he, after the second goal? Yeah. Keane and Dignam in the very last minute. Um, look, you have to give them serious credit here. This was a massive win. They're now second three points above At Lone. At Lone will obviously be disappointed, but. Like, how many times have UCD been behind in games, even two down and come back and got draws or wins? Like, they've done that a couple of times now, haven't they, this season? Uh, what a win. You know, to get them three points, like you said, now we're coming into the break. Now it's time, you know, before the break, it's getting yourself in there and getting yourself in contention of being spoken about and... Then after the break, you know, you really need to kick into gear and get the results on the board. It's all about getting the points. So I think you should be delighted to where they're at, you know. Uh, at this moment in time, I think they're possibly the informed team in the country at the minute. And, you know, the way they're playing and it's just so, so free flown and just... I think everyone absolutely loves being there and loves playing for UCD. And I love to see that. I really do. Uh, very impressed, really, really impressed. And look again, another team that I think were fully deserving of that win. In terms of Athlone, though, obviously they started off like unbelievably, and but it's gone from there, hasn't it, to there form wise. You think it's just a case of they've leveled off, but it's just you know what I mean. It's just a strange one for them, isn't it? Yeah, they'd be disappointed to lose yeah. games where they have. And, you know, I think. It was like it was too much too soon early on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like they were, it's like they were going for the toilet before they were even in the playoffs. So you know, I think that's it's it's going to even itself out over the course of the season, and that's going to go with everyone. Uh, they're still there, you know. They're 
like you nearly put them there above a few other teams as well. So, you know, that they're still there, they're the bounce. They would, in my opinion, they'd be in the playoffs. I know the break has come earlier than usual in the in, in normal times, like the break isn't around till July time. Especially for the first division because they started yeah. after as well, yeah. So you know, it's when I say mid season break, it's not mm. really uh one and a half way through or any but nowhere near this. So I I'm not a uh, I wouldn't be too critical of Atlanta where they are. Um, you know, the some of the football they played is brilliant, but you know, they be just need to hammer on that consistency home and try and even if you're not playing well, nick a draw, you don't need to you don't need to actually win the game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a lot better than last season as well, to be fair to them, isn't it? As well, like, you know. Uh, Cove Ramblers won Cork Nail in the Cork Derby and Cove got the revenge after losing the first day of the season here. Yeah. And uh, Young Hegarty got the winner here. But um, I think it's the first win over Cork since... I could be wrong here, guys, so don't batter me, since the 80s or something like that. Um, I'm not really too sure, but they haven't had too many wins over Cork um, recently. They're now a point behind Cork at the table. Cork are behind Galway before points adrift. You know, we'll talk about Cove first, actually, Keen. Well, how did Cove do, do you think? <laughs> Absolutely superb. Fully deserving of the three points. Uh, best team out there. Now, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was a scrappy game. Uh, like, there wasn't, it wasn't free flown from Cove. And it wasn't free flown from Cork. You know, Cork obviously put the pressure on and stuff like that. Mm. But, you know, once Cove went ahead in the game, I thought, that's it, that's Coulton's. See Cork coming back, and I said I said last week the best thing Cork can do here is get a point. Yeah. I really thought that was the best they can do, and look, they didn't even pick up one. So it's absolutely, I don't know, I really don't. But you know, Cove are superb. They fully deserve it. Played some really nice stuff at times in the game. I'm not going to say for the whole game because they weren't. They were under mm-hmm. it a little bit. Uh, was there a derby they, feeling as such, or? Ah, it's, really? it's, hard. it's hard when there's no crowd. Yeah, yeah. Look, the derby for it's a derby for Cove. Mm. We're in recent times, Cork City. Mm. I think like if you like Pat's playing shells at this minute in time, mm. you know, from Cork's the main team, derby really is Waterford and all honestly, yeah. like or should be. Yeah. So you know, Fair. I I, uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too worried about derbies and stuff like mm. that. You just need to win and Cork aren't doing that at the minute. They've no bottle. They just. Oh, really I know. Are. Just when you think they're improving a little bit, um, in some aspects, oh. but they seem to just they're not scoring goals. I don't have to create many opportunities. Keen, are they really? Uh, they had a couple in the game now. Okay, uh, yeah. like, like you'd expect. Like no, yeah. no disrespect. Me, I'm playing Cove Ramblers. Mm. I know they're a fantastic uh, set up and. Mm. You know, all the people there are great times for the book. Oh, yeah, some stuff they're doing yeah. recently is excellent. This is, you know what I mean? That's but, you know, well, yeah, but this is why they're getting the criticism. Like, I'm looking at the table now, and, like, they're eight in the table. I know there's only ten games gone, but still, they've won two games in ten. They're on nine points. This is a team and a club. They're a huge, huge club. We've said it before, probably number two in terms of the size of the club in the country. They've won the league title recently. Um, this is why they get more criticism than others. But I think Cork actually City fans understand that because I never see anyone complaining. <laughs> they get yeah, it. I, they get yeah. it themselves. They understand it. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Like, of course. Mm. I think, like, I'm, I'm just wondering at how, like, how it's gone so bad. And I, I really can't put my finger on it. And, like... Like, even their squad this season, Keane, it didn't look terrible. They just gone into the season. I thought they had a better squad than Galway. Yeah. Uh, and I actually picked Cork, I think, to finish second ahead of Galway just because of the squad alone. I, had them, I don't know where I had them, but I definitely had them top four. It was third or fourth yeah. I had them, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, I had them ahead of Galway considering I thought they had a better squad than Galway. Mm. But, but maybe um, they do, Keane, but that doesn't mean, you know what I mean? Like, that, you know yourself, yeah. a lot they've of other been, factors come into play, don't they? They've been awful and nothing short of awful. The break came at a good time for them. Uh, <laughs> they need to sort themselves out. Yeah, there's something that they, I don't know, there's obviously internal things as well that we don't really know of and that, but um, yeah, anyway, moving on. Treaty United 2, Bray Wanderers nil, and uh, 
this was Peter now seemingly to a nil nil, and all of a sudden the flurry goals laid on from Armshaw and uh, Armshaw, sorry, and an OG from Burn. A uh, superb win for Treaty here and uh, stops Bray's uh, winning habit a little bit and just reminds people that uh, after a couple of one or you know one or two dodgy ish results, the Treaty are still going well here. You know, oh yeah, massively, uh, really good. Like that game is Peter now to be a draw. I didn't think that was. Uh, I didn't think it wasn't coming as such. No, uh, no, it wasn't as bad as the first game. Trust me, it wasn't as bad. As Mind you, when yeah. I saw it was eight nil nil on eighty three minutes, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> yeah, "Yeah, no, it wasn't as bad." Yeah. Was, which you'd expect, you know. Well, however many games into the season now, teams are starting to get that real sharpness, and I think that's an that's another thing about the break. I think a lot of teams now have really got that sharpness into it, and the match the match sharpness is. 100% and they're ready to go and then you have a little break so early in the season you know I think mm. it, could have been, it could have been done in July mm. you know but like I, I, I don't know what this what the situation was like we heard everything is open and back up in July so I mostly think so they probably didn't want a break down you know I mean you'll see I've laid the stars ah. for out in the Raz so <laughs> could you imagine a break just as fans are allowed back in to some degree as well that's it yeah so yeah, I'd maybe say that's, that's the re- yeah. yeah it's just that's why they have it so early on I, I would fail uh, mm, mm. but you know a tree they, uh, they edged it they just mm. edged it and Bray weren't that bad mm. the tree weren't that good just tree took that chance and you know, got the second one then, and it looks comfortable on the scoreline, but it was no <laughs> in. Yeah, they'll be disappointed enough, Bray, with that. But um, look, they've got themselves back into a decent position. But uh, I suppose the difficulty of losing the game at this stage means you've two weeks to play the next game, which makes it harder in that kind of way, doesn't it? But yeah. uh, Shelburne 4, Galway United nil, and uh, you know, superb result for Shelburne because actually they wouldn't have wanted to break because they were starting to really motor, I think. You yeah. know, Connor, Brennan again, Maddie and Macaulay. The good thing about this is their forwards all their forwards, so to speak, got in the scoreline. I know Maddie's yeah. been playing wide and that, but Macaulay scoring, I think that's his first goal as well, is it? Uh, Potentially, if not, it's his second. It's, yeah. Yeah, he hasn't got many. And O'Connor obviously scoring as well, but great win for Shelburne. Seven wins out of ten, three draws, 22 goals scored, nine against, 24 points. Excellent. Uh, I think the bat was said this. I, I, I said it'd be a draw, but if it wasn't a draw, it was going to be a hammer. So... You know, it was one or the other, and I don't think there was any in between in the game. I, I said nil all or two nil. It's cheating. But... <laughs> yeah. well, you know, they fully deserve them. I think they really kicked into gear here. Some of the stuff mm. they played. That's like, a good point because you were saying how Galway would probably park the bus and you expected them to perform well defensively at least. They obviously didn't in this game, did they? What happened to them no. in, that, in that kind of way? Yeah, look, they were just outclassed by shells. Ah. Look, there's no... There's no... Like, you know, you know just sometimes there's no stopping a team when they're playing like that. Mm. It was honestly, it was a fantastic game. I'd encourage anyone that has the uh, LOI TV, or LOI yeah. TV, you know, to go back and look at it. It was a really good game with some some lovely bits of football and a passion to play in it. And or it was a game we watched on what night did I watch this? Friday, I think I watched this Friday night when I came home from mm. uh, Inchy Car. So it was it was a game that was you know fairly interesting. Uh, I didn't know the score, so that helps. But now that keeps you that keeps you looking at it. So mm. it was you know it was comfortable. Really, yeah. I think the yeah, elder was just like business done, like type of game. I think Galway actually, from their point of view, they need to really sit down over the break now and have a good look at what's not going right on that like you know I know we said it before we think their squad was a little bit overrated perhaps but at the same time they probably should be doing better and uh, I know John Caulfield will be the man of more that's for sure as well but um, you know what do they need exactly in your opinion I know they can't bring in any players in the next two weeks but I think they can two weeks later but what, what's yeah, it's, like, it's hard to yeah. you know if, it's, if they're a free agent they can bring them in so oh yeah uh, any time actually yeah I mean you know, I don't know, really, to be honest. I think mm. they could do with the old scorer. 
Uh, That's the thing with Lomboso getting injured at the start of the season, killed him, yeah. and Manning even, to a degree. Yeah. He's gone as well for a season. Ha- hasn't helped him, in fairness, has it? Yeah, no, I think they could do with a goal scorer. Mm. I think they could do with possibly a centre-half, mm. uh, possibly a winger. Look, I'll be naming every... Uh, I'll be naming mm. every position if I keep talking. But, you know, I think they, they're, they're lacking a lot, of, a lot of quality. I think the best they can hope for now, Keane's playoffs in reality, isn't it? Yeah, I think they have. Enough in my opinion, in. No, I think they have enough players in the squad. I just think they need quality, you know? They do have a so lot I of think, players, actually. I think we've seen that with... Like, we've seen that with teams in the Premier Division, like, yeah. jumping out at you, you know? You're looking at... Possibly dirty. You're looking at pots. You know we, they have a strong starting eleven, but outside mm. of that, it's a little bit mix and match. So I think mm. I don't think Galway. I think Galway have a sorry. I think Galway have a strong seven or eight mm. out of the eleven. So you know if he can bring them in and even make it a nine or a ten, uh, they might have a better chance. But you know, playoffs, we're in two weeks. You know, you could be out of it, we're in two weeks, you could be in it. So if you're resting if you're resting for playoffs, it's a little bit worrying considering Galway are full time now. And mm. you know, I, I like I said, Galway were always full time. Even mm. when they were a part time team, they're training the exact same amount of time. Mm. Just different times. Just in the mornings instead of the evening. So you know, I think that's that's the only difference of it, really. Like, and obviously, the financial aspect of it is probably a lot more than it would be as a part time. But in terms of getting they, players in these, and that, yeah. all these players are used to training the exact same amount of hours, so it's nothing new, really. Just change the times. Uh, but with that brings pressure. You hear them going full time, and you know that brings pressure and it shouldn't because there's no difference in my opinion no. but people don't know that some people that's yeah. the problem yeah exactly so it does put pressure on as such um, from, from yeah. an outside looking in sense yeah so, you know I think they were under a lot of pressure coming in especially how well they finished last season I think that was a big one it was like how well they actually finished last season to this season, you know, people thought right they're going to be right up there. We're going to see Galway in the Premier next year, and you know, it was all some relevant. people had actually tipped them to finish top. Yeah, some and, people. You yeah. know, you would, you mm. would. So, you know what I mean? There's no reason why they they shouldn't be up there. So, mm. yeah, I can understand where people are coming from there. Mm. Uh, really, I just don't know where. I don't. I can't put my finger on it. I really can't. Yeah, and just quickly before for Shelburne's point of view as well, like we knew they had the players as such, but they're obviously kicked in as a unit now. So I think there's no stopping them. I know it's early, but like I don't think there's anything stopping them. Do you, Keen? Uh, UCD potentially can I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's mm. for me at this minute in time, it's a two horse race between UCD and Shells. Mm. At the very yeah. best as well. Yeah. 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 And I think I think the only team that I'd put up against Shells and think they'd give them a real game. But look, everyone can give them a good game. On the day, I mean, yeah. Consistently, I think <laughs> I'd have confidence in UCD mm. giving them the game. You know, I, I think they've, uh, I think they're the closest challengers at this minute in time. Yeah. And just the way they're playing. But honestly, I'm looking at shells and watch the game back. Anyone that's listening, because like, look at the enjoyment in the players. Obviously, I foreign. look, they're gonna enjoy ourselves. But. You know, even from in a wound, the walk rate, the effort, everything that you want to see about Rochelle's team was there. And I think that's this team. I know we said it two years ago or whatever it was, but this team can really go places. I think this team is much stronger, though, than it yeah, was two this, years ago. This yeah. team can go go places in the Premier, you know, if they get themselves up. The hardest part is getting up. And mm-hmm. then, you know, they need to win the battles. And that's what happened to them last year. They like they were nowhere near relegation last year. Mm. I don't know what happened. Something happened in the last month of the season. It just seemed to unravel for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it did. I really like Shelburne. I like watching them play. I said it last year as well. I think, uh, you know, what Ian is doing and what he's building is Mm. exceptional. Uh, I'm delighted he's still there. Mm. I'm delighted they gave him. I think it shows a lot of balls from Shelburne. And that's probably something that Shells didn't have for many years is a bit of balls. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, they showed that they kept Morris, which I think was the right decision. But also easy. brought in someone like Alan Reynolds, which yeah. looks like it's working. We were and unsure. Sorry, but it's wor- what? Bringing in Kafo from Kevin's and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Massive, massive people in football that know the game and know mm. the league inside out. So I think Shells are getting everything 100% off the pitch. Mm. Look, we see this thing at the minute with South Talker Park and stuff like that. I don't know what the story is with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, um, I, I don't think um, it's. I think it's a bit late for that. If I'm honest with you, but anyway. Yeah. But you know, I I just think what they're doing off the field, like leave the ground out of it. I mean, like mm. bringing in the likes of Alan Reynolds, bringing in Caffo from Kevin's for me was a massive, massive mm. sign of what them. Possibly the sign of the disease. Because it's probably one of the things actually, Kane, they do need to improve is the underage structure a little bit at Shelburne because they are a bit behind, say, even the other Dublin sides when it comes to that, aren't they, in fairness? Yeah, I think Pats have really set the target. And yeah. Robert, you know, I think... Bows yeah, as Bowes, well, in fairness, as well. Bows, so. mean, Bows were about a year or two behind. Mm. But they caught but they're ahead with, of Shelburne, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. But they caught up with the Kevin's partnership and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, we... I think Pats and Pats and uh, Rovers, along with the likes of Wexford, even now from really good underage systems. Mm. Waterford, even for all the criticism Waterford gets, you know, yeah. they've done that well. You know, shells are doing really well, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, like I said, I'm delighted Ian has the job. Hopefully, he gets a crack at it now. Well, he will hopefully be in the Premier Division next year, and you know, Ian he'll do himself justice because I know how hard he works as a coach. I know the hours he puts in, I know the work rate he does and he instills that into his players. And, you know, I think the connection with the fans is back. Like, that obviously hasn't gone away since possibly the year they got promoted. So, mm. you know, I think it's it's a club really, really gone in the right direction again. Uh, they had a little setback. When I say little, I know relegation is possibly a big thing. But, mm. you know, they're a club now which is ready to... bounce back bounce back and really become a threat in the Premier League. They'll be looking at Drottede. They'll be looking at uh, the way Drottede have come into the Premier Division. Like, that should have been shelved last year. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I still think the squad they had last year was weaker, obviously, than this year. But still good enough, though. I still think it's good enough. I think mm. it's on par with Drottede's side. Mm. Uh, obviously, Drottede have... Well, ironically, they have some of their players now as well. <laughs> But I honestly, that's that's what I think. Uh, I I really thought uh, Shells now would be looking at the likes of Drotten and saying, you know, we can do that next year. Hopefully, they get promoted. The league needs it, mm. and I'd like to see a bit of a challenge with UCD. Mm. Thought you were going to say something else for a minute there, but anyway, guys, we leave it there. Please like the video, hit your subscribe button, and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. Cheers again. Cheers, Keen. Cheers.